everyone my name is rushikesh and right now i am in ingolstadt specifically in technische hochschule ingolstadt what i am doing here at the university well i came here to shoot a insights video on one of the master course at thi now you may ask what is insights video i am running a video series called insights videos and as part of the series i travel to different universities in germany make videos on courses you are interested to study as an inter- international student and provide you all the information in a single video so today's video is on masters in global foresight and technology management at thi most of the time i speak to students and ask them about their experience or courses or um, jobs or living expenses in the city etc but in this video i am also going to talk to one of the professors the course director so let's get started with insights into global foresight and technology management at thi i have professor shon man with me he is course director of global foresight and technology management so let's just get to know about the course a little bit from him uh, but first of all professor thank you so much for meeting me on saturday at the university and uh, what would you like to tell about tell us about yourself what is your background yeah, yeah. thank you for joining us today it's a pleasure to talk to you and to your community mm-hmm. Yeah, um first of all my name is Alexander. Um I'm professor at the Te- Technische Hochschule in Ingolstadt. I'm also the uh, program director and academic advisor of Global Foresight and Technology Management. My background is I'm industrial engineer as well as from my education and from my industrial experience. So I spent several years in industry in the automotive um industry. and um i did some research about technology management and technology design what is global foresight and technology management means what is this course is all about how is yeah. it structured yeah. yeah yeah so the global foresight and technology management masters program is quite new so um uh, you have to imagine that our environment um is increasingly changing it's getting more dynamic more complex mm-hmm. so traditional planning approaches are reaching their limits okay. and we need to um develop new tools new methods how to do strategy development for example so basically the whole program is based on the act approach or what we call the act approach anticipate create and transform So these are the three basic pillars of our program. First of all, anticipate. Anticipate is to imagine or to create multiple futures. So to put it in easy words, how we may live in the future, mm-hmm. what products we may need in the future. But only having this anticipate is not enough. We need also to put the knowledge into products into services we need to make money out of it to put yeah. it in 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 easy words yeah. so this is why we also need the create mm-hmm. pillar mm-hmm. and create is about cre- how to create new products how to create new services evaluate assess new technologies you maybe need to be um to to be uh, very successful in the future and then we also need to take care about transform this is the t in our act approach so transform your business model transform your industry transform a company so this is basically the act team and this is what we do in our program to learn methods and tools to help us to deal with the high uncertainty of our uh, environment sounds good sounds really yeah. great now uh, what kind of opportunity students can have once they graduate from this course yeah. what what kind of domain they can get into or what kind of roles do they play yeah. in the industry yeah so our graduates are perfectly trained to work in the consultant industry as a consultant for example to mm-hmm. work in the product development product management mm-hmm. and um also in a strategy department of a company so this is a typical fields mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where our students yeah. work uh, okay. after graduation okay. um but of course um, it's not only about companies it's also about yeah. the public sector yeah. so all the governments are highly interested in getting people who mm-hmm. can cope with the dynamic and complex world okay. and also to develop from the public perspective scenarios how the world will look like in the right. future right. and this is also very important mm-hmm. behind our program mm-hmm. there's a research institute so we founded the bavarian foresight institute mm-hmm. so this means you have also the opportunity to go for a phd mm-hmm. to go for academic career if right. you want to so yeah. this is also a very interesting option yeah. 
going into the public sector, going with the company, or continuing your academic career. Sounds really great. I mean, yeah. it is better to have some options as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, I'm, uh, do they also get some opportunities while studying, like part-time jobs uh, as a working student or something, so that they can also get industry experience while studying and they can utilize it yes. while they look for a job? Yes, yeah. very important. We try to put our timetable as compact as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, so maybe having, I can't promise it, but our goal is to have the lectures on three days a week. Okay. And many of our students have a working student job um, or doing an internship right. or even working as a student assistant. So as yeah. I already explained, we have our research institute yes. behind the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, some students will also go for a student's assistance position. Right. Okay. Perfect. Now, the last question for you would be, what would you like to tell my like upcoming students <laughs> who will be interested in this course, yeah. what, do share, what, do they, uh, what should they come prepared? Yeah. What would you like? Uh, yeah. So yeah. it is very important to be open-minded and to have an interest in learning something new. So we will teach you the latest research methods and tools to mm -hmm. cope in the high dynamic, highly dynamic and complex world. Mm -hmm. And if you're open-minded to also get into the management perspective, into the business perspective, this, you will have a lot of fun. I think I have all the information what students would like to know uh, about this course and I also had a little bit personal chat with Professor uh, Shonman and I got to know him a little bit and he told me that he visited India for three weeks uh, recently and it was a good experience. So good to know that as well and thank you so much for your time. Thank you yeah. so much. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Yes. Bye. That was the meeting we had with the professors, the course directors and you got to know in detail about the course but you would also be interested to know from the student's perspective. How does it feel to know, how does it feel to live here in Ingolstadt uh, studying global foresight and technology management, what are the student expenses here that you can expect, uh, what kind of part-time jobs and all you can get with that. So let's just meet my friend um, Divesh here, he is studying the course. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you Rishikesh for the opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, a little, a little about myself. Uh, my name is Divyesh and uh, I come from a small town called Kasagod, which is in the north part of Kerala and which is also like 40 kilometers from uh, Mangalore. So, uh, about my bachelor's, so I did my bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering uh, and I graduated in 2016. Mm -hmm. And then during my fourth year, I got uh, a placement, on-campus placement at LNT Technology Services. And I worked there for three years as a mechanical design engineer. So my work usually involved uh, working with CAD models and drawings and new product development, mm -hmm. and uh, usually CAD stuff and drawings. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after three years, I switched to a company called as TE Connectivity, and I worked there as an R&D product development engineer for two years. Okay. So this was uh, during the COVID time. and. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking that uh, I have to. I will eventually end up being a manager someday. So I thought I would develop some skills related to management, and I started looking for courses. Okay. And during my search for this course, I found this uh, unique course uh, from THI that is called uh, Global Foresight and Technology Management. Mm -hmm. So it has a nice uh, blend of technology management mm -hmm. and also a strong focus on foresight. Okay. So. I had a feeling that this course may be uh, very, very interesting in the future mm -hmm. and it had intrigued me a lot. Okay. So I immediately started applying for it. So mm -hmm. I had a VPD score of uh, 1.7 when I was applying for it. Mm -hmm. I had a good five years of experience, so mm -hmm. I was pretty confident. Yeah. My German knowledge was A1, but I did not have a certificate then. But yeah, it is possible to apply without the German knowledge as well. So yeah, I it was quite simple to apply and I applied for the course mm -hmm. and during my first uh, uh, when the results were announced, I did not get selected. But then again, after 14 days, the second set of results were announced and I got selected. Okay. So and now I'm here. Sounds perfect. Yep. I mean, that's really nice. Yeah. I talked to him before uh, and he told me that he's going to start with his master thesis now. So, so soon he will be finishing the degree. So it would be a right question for you now. Yeah. How do you feel about the course? So yeah, I have finished four semesters in this course, mm -hmm. uh, but the way the course is designed is uh, really, really nice. Mm -hmm. So they have divided the course into say five clusters. Mm -hmm. So there is this tech, uh, cluster of foresight, where we study strategic foresight and trend analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we learn what is foresight and uh, what are weak signals, what are the different tools that we use to okay. identify weak signals. Mm -hmm. And then we learn a very important tool called as uh, scenario planning. Mm -hmm. And it's also uh, business wargaming, which okay. is very widely used now in the 
corporates to identify different futures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and the application of this uh, strategic foresight and trend analysis is uh, Project Future Life Worlds, mm -hmm. where we have industry collaborations and uh, uh, we have to uh, practically apply what we learned in the, that particular subject. Okay. And then we have this another cluster that is called as cluster mm -hmm. technology mm -hmm. where uh, we have uh, subjects like innovation management okay. and then we have subjects like technology design and evaluation yeah. so these are subjects which helps us to scan and scout different technologies right. so uh, and then application of that there is a subject called as project technology application mm -hmm. so here when i joined we had uh, industry collaboration with a company uh, everyone knows it's called puma so and we uh, uh, did extensive uh, work with them. Mm -hmm. So it was quite interesting to right. learn their perspective, learn to get to know about the footwear industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, the next cluster is cluster uh, uh, economics. So cluster economics, we learn about future business modeling. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we learn how to create business models. What are the future of business models, mm -hmm. like sustainable business models or social business models, mm -hmm. where we not only you know gen learn to generate profit but also create some social impact and an application of that is uh, what we call as project business scenarios and risk management okay. so where we also do some scenario planning which we learned in the first semester mm -hmm. and also learn something about risk management okay. which is quite important in this mm -hmm. day and age mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the next uh, one is uh, cluster social aspect okay. so this is uh, the this is a uh, subject which is kind of uh, will be difficult for some people because people coming from engineering background it is yeah. hard to grasp some yeah. sub such sub subjects like this yeah. so we learn about technology assessment and business ethics mm -hmm. so there are so many uh, technologies that are coming up uh, mm -hmm. these days we mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. ai based uh, text generator like uh, yeah. chat gpt mm -hmm. and we learn about uh, what are the ethical uh, reasoning behind it yeah. is it safe to use it is it not safe to use it okay. so we learn about such interesting topics even metaverse uh -huh. so we learn about such topics Another subject is the uh, transformation process and change management. So mm -hmm. here uh, there are so many technologies that are coming up. So if a company has to implement, say, uh, digital technologies, how would you try to uh, uh, move people into using that technology, or how would you organize a workshop to, you know, move uh, to, to start people to adopt such technologies? Okay. The last one uh, is the cluster integrative. Uh, so mm -hmm. there are like two uh, scientific research seminar. Mm -hmm. So it is a mini master's thesis, okay. and then we have the master's thesis itself. So where you can specialize uh, what uh, uh, area you want to go into. Okay. So coming to that, uh, mm -hmm. I, I love innovation management. So I, I am currently in talks with my professor to go move into the innovation management side mm -hmm. of this course. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently doing my literature research and uh, yeah. Sounds but really good. I mean, yeah. the way you explain in detail, I yeah. think um, those who are, who are interested to come into this business side, yeah. I think that would be perfect for you here. How do you feel your life in Ingo start? What are, what are what your expenses? How much do you spend here monthly? So since Ingolstadt is a uh, Audi town, so it is kind of expensive. Uh, the expenses are comparable to Munich. Yeah. So you can easily uh, spend in between 300 and 450 euros uh, for the accommodation itself. And then you have another 120 euros and expenses for insurance. Yeah. And then probably if you want to buy, uh, say, a bus pass, that mm -hmm. costs you another 23 euros. Yeah. A pro tip would be to use the bus pass during the winter semester and use the cycles, you know, in, in the yeah. summer semester. That's and true. yeah, and then uh, then you have other expenses. So it mm -hmm. all depends. It's it's very subjective. You mm -hmm. can use more for your groceries or you can use less, but mm -hmm. I would say 100 to 150 euros for your groceries. Okay. So total may come up to around 800 euros. So it's quite steep, but Ingolstadt is a very nice town. You have almost everything uh, available here that a big town has to offer. You have clubs if you want to party, if you have nice lakes like Bagazay and Awalze where you can chill out during your summer time. Uh, you have a lot of eating options as well, like there are different kinds and different cuisines as well. Uh, you have Asian, you have Mexican, Greek, uh, you name it, we have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, and then if you want to say you have, want to have fun, uh, probably uh, there is a Hochschule sport mm -hmm. where uh, we have like footballs on Mondays, mm -hmm. yogas mm -hmm. on Wednesdays. Yeah. So there are different options, there are clubs where you can go play. Yeah, overall, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, there are a lot of cycling uh, trails as well. Yeah. Where I do a lot of cycling, so you can always uh, go on cycle rides during yeah. your weekends. What should they come prepared? They got to know from the professor's perspective, in terms of like student perspective. Hmm. What would you like to tell them? Uh, that's interesting. 
Uh, I would say we have three things. Uh, be open-minded is the first thing. Like you are dealing with technologies here that are like five, ten years down the line. So it is quite hard to uh, remember or develop the use cases now, but it will get relevant in the future. So you have to keep an open mind about technologies and be optimistic about it. Yeah. And say, I mean, I yeah. mean that's what he also said. Yeah. Know, he <laughs> also said the same yeah. thing. The first point was about this, like op being open-minded. Yeah. Yeah, please go on. That's quite important. Uh, and uh, the second thing is like, you have to be empathetic. You are coming here for an international exposure. So you will work with different kinds of individuals who are from different countries. So don't stay in your comfort zone, uh, mingle with people, when you work with groups, you may find uh, you have uh, disparities between uh, working together, but you will get through it, but always be empathetic to the people you are working with. You will, ha you will have a nice time. And at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, you also have to be very active in the class, uh, participate and participate in the group discussions and ask questions with the professor. They're always happy to answer your questions. So be active and attend the classes. Yeah, I think this way we are going to come in, we are coming to an end of our video. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure all this information that he shared is going to be really helpful for you. That's all in this video. Thank you so much, Divesh, once again. And uh, what in the end, what would you like to tell these guys what they have to do? So definitely check out uh, Rishikesh's channel. Like, share and subscribe. Yeah? yeah. So thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye.